Hello folks, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can recover your SSH keys for a server which has been lost or you want to rotate your keys which has been on the server for a very long time. Sometimes this is really important because uh, if you don't have access to the server, you might not be able to do some administrative activities or you are not able to recover the server in a severity one incident or things like that. Earlier, I have shown you a video where you can do that by unmounting the root volume and attaching it as a slave disk in another volume and then copying over the keys. Today, we are going to see how we can do the same activity using the user data field with very less downtime and probably in a couple of steps, we should be able to accomplish that. So let us see how we can do that. So basically, we need a couple of uh, servers for that. The first server, I'm going to call it a recovery server with, I mean, server without key. This is the one we are going to recover or the server without any keys to which you can log in to. And next server is called as a recovery server. I'm just naming it as recovery server so we can refer to it. It's not, nothing by, nothing special. We are going to have access to the server and the keys for this server is available. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to copy the authorized keys from the recovery server and put them into the server without key. So all you have to do is copy this whole text and put it into the user data field. And once you reboot the server with a new user data field, automatically you should have the new keys copied over. So if I go over to my EC2 dashboard, here you have you see that there is one server that is already running i'm calling it a server without key and it is running a very old key which was created in 2015 and i want to replace this key with a new key so i'm just going to have a, a recovery for this server um, so that is running as a recovery server here and i have a new recovery key also this is available with me and this is no longer available with me so how we are going to do that i'm going to connect to this server first recovery server let us go ahead and do that so i'm going to connect to a recovery server now i'm going to put the ip address and make sure the user is ec2 user and then i'm going to connect it with my private key which is called as the recovery key now the authorized keys are usually in the home folder of the user that we are going to connect to so in this case, I'm going to use the home folder of EC2 user. If you are going to recover for a, for a different user, then you need to go into the home folder of that user. So it is under SSH and the file name is authorized keys. So what we need to copy is only this much of text and we don't need the tag name for the key itself. So just copy this so that we can reuse it later. So where are we going to update this? If we come back to the GitHub article, you will see that I have given the entire content here. All you have to do is copy this and I would like you to change this text within the codes with the key that you copied from the server. Make sure that this entire text is in a single line. I'm going to show you how you can do that in a notepad file. Copy this over to a notepad. And when you're copying to notepad, make sure that your word wrap is not enabled so that you don't introduce any special characters. So I'm just going to remove this entire text now and let us go to the server now and remember we are still in the recovery server i'm copying this text you can see here from the recovery server we are copying this text and in our notepad we are going to paste it and you see here the text is folded into three lines because we are copying it from a putty screen and i'm just going to remove any control characters here so that the entire text appears on a single line so we are all done here. I'm just going to copy this now. Come back to your EC2 dashboard and stop this server without key so that we can update its user data field. So it is under stopping state now. Now that my server is stopped, I'm going to update the user data field. Let me just go ahead and choose the correct option here. View or change user data. I'm just going to paste the text that we copied from our uh, notepad file so you can go ahead and verify it if you want to click on save and then i'm going to start the server now and once it comes up with a public ip address let us go ahead and try and connect so we are going to use the recovery key to connect to this server now so this is the key we are going to use and to connect to the recovery server itself so i'm just going to wait for my public ip address now so we got the IP address. Let me go ahead and connect to it. 
So let us go ahead and connect to the recovery server. I just created a temporary session. Let me go ahead and edit this session. Let me update the IP address. And this is my user, EC2 iPhone user. And let us go ahead and update the private key also to the recovery key. And if everything is done correctly, I should be able to connect to the server. So this is how you use the user data field for updating the old keys. And remember this user data field will be updating every time. If you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and remove the always field that is there or you can leave it as it is. There should not be a problem with it also. So if you have any problem in setting it up in your account, go ahead and put them in the comment section or if you have a better way of doing it, let me know so we can all share and learn from each other. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.